Aside from Zlatan Ibrahimovic, it's probably fair to say that most fancy Premier League managers haven't been looking at attacking assets when it comes to Man United. With a good run of fixtures about to start, I'm wondering if it's worth taking a look at one of Henrik Mkhitaryan or Paul Pogba. Coming up, I'm going to take a look at the fixtures, individual players and the general prospects for these two. And there is one thing that you won't find in this video. Alternative facts. What's up everyone, welcome to another FPL video and today, like I said at the start of the video, we're taking a look at Man United midfielders in the form of Mkhitaryan and Paul Pogba. Now I know the bias is probably starting to shine through a little bit. I did a video last week on midfield game changes including Mkhitaryan. I've got him in my team and I'm a Man United fan but I do think they're worth looking at. I know there's potential blank fixtures to think about but the fixtures they have coming up are really good and that's where we're going to start the video today. An initial look at the next five fixtures is pretty good for Man United. We've got Hull, Leicester, Watford and Bournemouth to play in the next five. And the other game is Man City. Now in the past seasons that may have had a bit of a fear factor to go with it. But I think right now most teams will be pretty comfortable going to Man City and thinking they can at least nick a goal. So that might not be the worst fixture for attackers either. There's a chance that won't go ahead. Uh, but we'll come on to that in a little bit. For now, we're going to start with Hull. So next game's against Hull. Uh, worth noting that in away games, Hull have actually conceded the third highest amount of shots per game. Now, it's also worth taking into account that they have got a new manager in Marco Silva. He's currently managed two league games so far. So there was a 3-1 win over Bournemouth, which is pretty good. And a 2-0 loss to Chelsea. Now, obviously, no one wants to lose. But I think most people expected Chelsea to win that by a bigger margin. So potentially, Silva's got them playing more defensively. We'll have to see. Currently, they're playing in the League Cup at the time we're recording this. It's 1-0. Um, obviously, the difference there is Man United are playing away. I would expect them to win the game at home pretty comfortably. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but I think this is a good fixture for United. Uh, and then after that, it's Leicester. So, obviously, they won the league last year. But this year, I don't think it's going to be another repeat of that. They're currently sitting in 15th place. They've lost half of their games this season and have conceded seven goals in their last four home games. So, although this is an away fixture for United, I think it's a good one. In the reverse fixture earlier in the season, United actually won 4-1, and it could have been a lot worse if we had had our shooting boots on. Um, so I think there's points here for the attackers. So after Leicester, it's a game against Watford at Old Trafford. Watford have currently conceded seven goals in their last four away fixtures, and to be honest, generally they've been pretty poor at the back this season. Only five teams have conceded more goals than they have, and they're currently conceding an average of 15 shots per game. And they've only kept one clean sheet since game week 10, so overall pretty poor. I think this is a really good fixture for anyone at home, especially Man United. I think this is going to be a good game for us. You can see us winning this comfortably, perhaps by two to three goals. So again, midfielders, strikers, there's going to be points here, hopefully for Pogba and Mkhitaryan. And then after that, it's actually Man City away. Like I said, that's probably not the worst fixture, although you'd expect Jose Mourinho to probably go in and defend. So maybe there's not too many points here for the attackers, but it does look like this one's going to be a blank. At the time of the recording, it's currently 1-1, which puts United through. And if either Man City or Man United go through to the fifth round in the FA Cup, then this will definitely be a blank and the players will miss this. So bear this in mind before you bring over these players in. They may miss a game in a few weeks. Obviously, you can bench a few. But with Arsenal also missing that game, you're probably going to have to bench players like Sanchez. So it's worth keeping an eye on. So the final game we're looking at in this run of five fixtures is Bournemouth at home. In away games, they currently sit four for shots conceded per game. Slightly above Watford on 15.9. Um, we've conceded three goals in four of the last five away fixtures, which is pretty poor defensive record. And they've lost Aki, so it's not looking too good for them right now. Um, they're a team that can score goals, but they're not so good at shutting teams out. And I really wouldn't expect a clean sheet for them here. If they keep on shipping that many goals, then surely someone other than Ibra is going to score in this one. And my money would be on one of Pogba and Mkhitaryan. Maybe that's just a hopeful, uh, hopeful thought in my head. But I really think there's goals in this one and over the run of those five fixtures. So let's take a look at Paul Pogba first. He arrived at United in the summer, as we all know, for £89 million. And it's probably fair to say he hasn't quite lived up to expectations. And perhaps he never will, given that the price tag's so high and all eyes are on him at all times. But as we'd imagine, he's uh, nailed a spot in the main United midfield. Currently priced at £8.5 million, is owned by just 11% of all teams. So that means 9 out of 10 teams that you come across will not have Paul Pogba in their side. Now he's only scored 4 league goals this season so far and has 3 assists to his name. And he's got just a single goal in the last 4 game weeks. But I do wonder if the goals and assists are coming when you look at the fixtures and the stats. So in the last 4 game weeks he's created 9 chances from 9 key passes. 
They had 15 goal attempts with four of these being on target. Now, obviously, it would definitely be nice if you, if more of these shots were on target, of course. Um, but when you have someone that's so happy to shoot, potentially the FPL points are coming. It's just a matter of when are they coming. Hopefully, it's now. Um, additionally, a rate of nine key passes in four games, which is pretty good. Nothing to be sniffed at. And if Man United attackers in general can keep converting or start converting, then we're definitely going to see more goals from the team in general. So hopefully Pog can pick up not just goals, but also assists. Now he only has himself a goal conversion rate of 7-8% to in the last four game weeks. You'd expect someone of his quality to start putting him away. Like I said, at the time of recording, Man United are actually playing Hull and he's just scored in that game. So fingers crossed he can take that over to the league. Hopefully it'll be similar to Ibrahimovic earlier in the season. He had plenty of shots but just wasn't converting. We all know how that's gone in the last 10 or so weeks. So fingers crossed for Pogba as well. Similarly to Pogba, Mkhitaryan also arrived in the summer. Albeit with a much reduced price tag when you compare the two. But still, expectations were pretty high given how well his final season in the Bundesliga went. It's fair to say things did start off slowly. The Armenian was introduced slowly by Jose Mourinho. But he does now look to be first choice. He started six of the last seven league games. And the only one he didn't start was the one where he came back from injury. So he does seem to have nailed a place in that midfield. But in the last four games, he's actually had no attacking returns. But he did score two in the games before this run of four fixtures that we're looking at. Um, he's also creating more chances than Pogba. Only just. He's got 11 key passes compared to Pogba's nine. Um, but he's actually really reduced when it comes to shots compared to Pogba. He's only had six shots in those four matches with three on target. Now, this does mean that 50% of his shots at least are on target compared to Pogba, who's currently sitting around 27%. He does tend to shoot off target a bit more. I'd personally like to see him attempting more shots, Mkhitaryan that is, before we start considering him going on a goal threat. But surely there's an assist coming. I've watched a few of the Man United games. He's got a bit unlucky. There was some dodgy finishing in one of the games. But he surely should have had an assist by now. So that's definitely coming. It's just whether the 8.9 million price tag, which is what he is right now, can be matched when it comes to just assists. We'll have to see. The fixtures are looking good. The assists are going to come, I think. It's just whether or not he can also add goals to his game. So that's one thing to keep an eye on or think about when you're looking at bringing one of these two in, potentially. So we definitely need to talk about conversion in this video. Maynard is just hasn't been good enough. Um, you've probably seen in recent weeks, there's plenty of Twitter accounts picking up on it now. News sources are reporting it. But we're currently seeing at 8.8% of shots converted, which is the third lowest in the league. Now, compare that to Chelsea, who are on 14.6% conversion. You know, that's top, and one of the reasons that they're top of the league right now. Uh, we need other players other than Ibrahimovic to start chipping in. He scored 14 goals for us this season in the league, which is great. But our next highest scorer is Pogba on four goals. So we need other players to start converting if we want to win these games by bigger margins and obviously get more FPL points for players other than Ibrahimovic. All's not lost, though. Being ranked so low on these tables, with the quality we've got in the side, you would expect that figure to go up and not down, so more goals are coming. Um, overall for the season, United are fifth for average shots per game. So if the conversion does start to go up, there would definitely be much more goals, given the amount of shots we're getting off. Um, so all's not lost, like I said, but it's definitely another thing to consider when you're looking at these two players, that the whole team is converting badly, not just one or two players. So, as always, I'm going to pick one. Even I'm not crazy enough to think that you should have two main United midfielders in your team right now. I've currently got Mkhitaryan in my team, and I have done for the last four game weeks. Like I said earlier in the video, I do feel a bit unlucky not to have got any points from him so far. Should have at least had an assist by now. Um, but I did look at both him and Pogba when I brought Mkhitaryan in. And I looked at the stats. I saw that Pogba was better, but I went against it. And I would have only got an extra goal, but obviously points are all we want in, in FPL. So that would have been good. And right now, if I had unlimited transfers and could just change, I would definitely go for Pogba, I think. His stats are better. He's creating nearly the same amount of chances as Mkhitaryan. But he's having way more shots. So, obviously, shots are what's going to get you the goals, which are worth more points. So, uh, I think Pogba's the one to go for. The other reason for that is he's guaranteed minutes. So, he's always going to play 90 minutes. He hasn't missed a single minute since game week two. And while I do think Mkhitaryan is first choice now, there are other players that can play in that position, such as Martial, Lingard, or Rashford even, who are all kind of waiting in the wings. And he doesn't tend to make it to 90 minutes that often. So I think he's a good option. He's more of a differential than Pogba. But I think Pogba in this case is the better choice and be the one that I go for. Now whether you should even be considering a Man United midfielder right now, 
Obviously, that's really up to you. The midfielders that I see as most essential right now would be Ericsson, Ali, and Sanchez. So there is a space potentially for a Man United midfielder. Probably easier to fit in if you're playing 3 5 2 than 3 4 3. Um, I would definitely agree that it's a bit of a risk. But if you want to go up those rankings, the, neither of these players are well owned. Um, and they've got really nice fixtures. We'll have to keep an eye on the blanks. That's always going to play on our minds. But I do think these could be a risk that would pay off. Um, but we'll wait and see if that's the case. That's where we're going to leave today's video. Thanks as always for watching. Let me know in the comments below. Am I just being completely biased in this case? Should we even be looking at a Man United midfielder right now? Are the fixtures that good to consider one? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, it's worth noting as well that at the time of finishing this recording, Hull have actually won the match uh, in the League Cup semi-final, but Man United are going to go through on aggregate, so they will play in the final. And if either they or Man City win their fourth round game in the FA Cup, the match in game week 26 will be called off and rescheduled. So keep that in mind because obviously that will be Ibra Blanken, which most of us own. Sanchez, another really home, high home player that's also going to miss it. So obviously if you bring another midfielder in, Man United midfielder, potentially they're also going to miss it. So keep an eye on the blank game weeks. Um, I've said on my streams already, follow Ben Credo on Twitter. I'll link his account below. He knows all about double game weeks. He's always tweeting about it. He's a really handy guy to follow. Um, if you did enjoy the video, drop a like on it. and be really appreciated. Make sure you subscribe for more so you'll catch the next video. And also when I'm going live, I'm doing live streams for FPL, answering the chat's questions, etc. Just, just chatting FPL in general, really. Um, the next one of those will probably be on Sunday. But I'll tweet out confirmation of that. So if you follow me at Twitter, it's Andy85WSM. You'll know in advance when I'm going live. Uh, but at that point, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching again. Uh, keep chatting FPL and I'll catch you soon.